Okay, so we're in a, in a donut and pairs are sharing their thoughts now, reflecting on what is experiential learning and why is it important in the teaching of uh, Hizzy. In our pairs, Karen and Annabelle's pairs, um, we... <laughs> Don't make me laugh. Can we stop? <laughs> yeah, keep, keep going. Okay, um, we just discussed that it's experimental learning is really good so children are able to get involved and experience um, the lesson and be more hands-on and um, so that all learning styles are able to be catered for um, so and also too there's meaning making in that as well rather than a teacher just sitting there dictating the information they're actually getting the um, the concept in that themselves and also the collaboration yeah and to relate it to Hizzy it's really good that because it is um, to do with like maps and to do with history and finding out information and it's more beneficial when it's actual experimental learning because you can go outside and and be hands on and be able to find out and be involved in the history rather than just being face to face mm. with the history. And also history helps for us to understand more about who we were, who we are and who we can be as well both individually and as a community. Go back. Um, so the question this time is what is place based teaching and why is it important in the teaching of history? Um, place based learning is important because it takes students out of the classroom and it allows them to experience the learning that's happening around them rather than just from a textbook or what a teacher can tell them. Um, it's, also in, it's also really important because it invites children and gets them into the learning and helps them experience and makes it relevant to their lives. So we're talking about why it's important to make connections between students' own lives. Um, students gain better understanding from making connections with their own life and understanding their own historical learning and that will allow them to teach more effectively to their students and help them understand how they learn better in the historical context. Yep. That's good. <laughs> <laughs> so, darling, can I, can I ask the, the inverted question? What happens if we don't think about individual students' experiences when we're teaching history? Uh, we can't make like the relevant connections and teach. Then oh, everybody, will have, everybody will have the same broad understanding because every individual takes something different from their learning. Yeah. Well done, you two. Um, what's the first step in the historical inquiry process? So, what do you, as a teacher, need to do to facilitate learning for? Um, it's your... supplying them resources and also asking them questions to help facilitate their own learning through investigation. Yeah, do it on an angle. <laughs> What's the second step in the historical inquiry process? <laughs> Hi, investigate. <laughs> and the third step in the historical inquiry process is... <laughs> you look like you're in a tropical heatwave, okay. madam. So hang on a second, you've got to go, go high in the third stage. All right, reflection. <laughs> <Yeah>. Reflection. <laughs> <laughs> so to make sense of this for you, the first step in the inquiry process was the teacher gathering resources for the students to use. The next step was research and when you saw my pre-service teachers outside um, um, looking at the resources and, and um, um, conducting research and, and observing buildings and looking at pictures and, and making sense of documents, that was the students conducting research. The next step was analysis. They were thinking through um, the, the questions that I had set for them. The last, the last part of the inquiry process is explanation and communication. Now we didn't have time for that today, but if they were teachers with primary school students, what they would probably do is give students a sentence starter like, um, back in um, the early 1900s, life was like this, and get students to share um, the knowledge they had gathered. And so the last part of the inquiry process, the fourth step, is explanation and communication.